What's up, tea drinkers? Who's ready to spill? Welcome to The Tea with KG, hosted by your girl, Kaylee Grace. Here you'll find your weekly boost of real talk mixed with laughter, healing, and all of those vulnerable, messy moments in between. The Tea with KG is a safe space for you to show up exactly as you are. We are here to share real life stories from around the globe and be a community of love, joy, and celebrating life. This is a real deal show, so there will be coarse language and sensitive topics discussed. The most beautiful stories oftentimes emerge from the darkest of places, and we're here to explore it all. There's room for everyone at this tea time, so grab your drink of choice, spark it up, or just relax and soak it up. Cheers, and let's spill. What's up, tea drinkers? We are back with another episode of The Tea with KG. I'm your host, Kaylee Grace, and I have another amazing guest joining me this week, the lovely, beautiful, talented Essie Dupuis. Yay! <laughs> we got a cute little wave there. <laughs> we're so excited to have you. Thank you so much for taking I know we're both so busy, but we're like, we need to make this work. So thank you for scheduling us in today. Listen, I'm so happy to be here. I'm excited. I love you. I love the work that you're doing. And I'm honored and excited to be here. Yay! I'm so excited. So Essie and I have known each other, my God, for pretty much like 10 years, I think. I think, yeah, it's it's been like 10 years, which is wild because time just goes so fast. But I also feel like I've known her so long. And to me, that's like the telltale sign of like a soul connection in someone when Mm -hmm. The time flies, but you also are like, I've I've known you for forever. And I just Mm -hmm. love those types of connections. And we felt that so instantly. We met through work, right? Was it through the bank? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that we just instantly kind of connected, like you said. And I mean, you see people through so many different seasons of life. So it's kind of like not even who you've known the longest, (laughs) but who sticks around through all those seasons, right? Yeah. Um, But yeah, I think it was really like a fate of the universe that we ended up working at the same place at the same time and and were able to do that. So it's amazing. Oh, I agree. And me and Essie have seen each other through probably I would say for myself (laughs) probably some of the hardest most challenging times in my life like she has been there and she's she was there from the start of it and she never left like she was like she saw me through so many hardships and so much growth and so many things and always could see my light always could see my sunshine and her and I are a lot of like like that I'd say we are both very sunshine people and it's just I'm gonna cry right now but it's just beautiful that she never that never faltered with you. Like you never were like unable to see that in me. So I really appreciate, appreciate that a lot. Oh, that's so sweet. (laughs) And you know what? It's so funny that you say that because um, you also saw my light when I was in the dark and I remember you giving me the stone, the citron stone and I still have it and I still like put it in the sun and like recharge it. And yeah, no, that's uh, very meaningful to me. Of course, citrine is like the best. Like it's perfectly you because it's yellow, which is like so happy and pretty. And it's like the happy abundance stone, which funnily enough brings me to what our topic is today. We are talking (laughs) all about money, abundance, money talks. Essie is literally, she's a wealth of wisdom in general. But when it comes to actually making that coin, she's like amazing. Like always has been and we're definitely we're going to dive into her story we're going to hear so much amazing stuff with mindset and money which especially like her and I were chatting today in today's climate with what's going on we need to learn this stuff we need to hear it so I'm so excited for this episode yay gonna yeah, be I'm excited yay so I guess we'll start with the who are you and what do you do well, um, I'm Essie Dupuy, as you said. I am a banker uh, by trade. Currently, I'm serving as a mortgage specialist. I've been doing that for a couple of years, um, but I've done a lot of different things within banking. So I've been in banking for about 10 years, and uh, I've done every job that you can do kind of on the branch level, and then a couple of years ago made the switch to um, to kind of become a little bit more specialized. So yeah. um, it's something that I've been very, very interested in for a long time. 
Um, and I like money professionally, but I also <laughs> like money as a topic in general. And, yes. <laughs> and I'm a bit of a money nerd, which is why I'm here. Um, I love I, it. <laughs> I think that, you know, it it is really um, a big topic right now uh, for people who previously maybe didn't even think about money that much or didn't want to talk about it and now all of a sudden everybody's talking about it right whether you're talking about interest rates or the cost of gas or um you know inflation like groceries yeah. everything you know the, the topic is everywhere and I obviously talk to a lot of people in my work and um and the big thing that sticks out is that there's just a lot of things that I think people just don't know people are, are looking for help a lot of the times and they don't really know where to get it or how to kind of start those conversations and, oh yeah um, it's overwhelming and, and yeah it, it it's so much it's, it's personal and you know it's it's uh people feel shame around money oh, there's a lot of yes. there's a lot of emotion that comes with it right um yeah. so so I mean there's a lot in that topic um but before we dive in Kaylee I have a couple of disclosures that I, I yep, kind of have absolutely. to throw out there yep. for my work go for my it life. um so I mean everything that we talk about obviously is is my opinion my interpretation um none of this is to be construed as individual financial advice um everybody's situation is is very unique and you should talk to a financial professional if you have specific questions about your own financial situation and um, the other thing is that none of what I speak of is uh, is a reflection of my employer's opinions or anything like that um, it is solely for uh, informational and entertainment purposes only so I'm not a, a lawyer so I'm not sure if that disclosure is up to kosher but we'll just we'll just call it good and hope I think it's good <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is not yes it's the same as like um she's not a doctor this is not health you know what I mean like when they're like it's that kind of thing yeah it's not health advice <laughs> well, I mean, it could be like, you know, financial health, like tips and, and, you know, a conversation, but yeah, no, nobody should like, you know, go and be like, well, that girl on that podcast, she said to do this. <laughs> exactly. This is just, again, yes, it's educational, but in an entertainment setting and it's just us sharing our life experiences, our mm. stories and hope that, you know, maybe it resonates with someone out there yeah. and it might give you the courage to take the next step somewhere, or it might give you some inspiration to be like, okay, I'm changing my life right now. <laughs> well, just kind of opening up that conversation too, right? Because like I said, yeah. I mean, it's something that a lot of people just don't tend to talk about or, or oh, guess, for sure. in some cases think about, but now they're forced to think about it. So Yeah. Well, and I love how you said about the, uh, the emotion behind money, because mm -hmm. I'm totally Totally, totally can relate to that. Like, you know, because I feel like in our society, money and your wealth, and I'm saying monetary wealth, because mm. I think wealth is in multiple areas of life. Mm. People associate that with your worth, it seems in our mm. society. Anyway, the North American hustle, hustle, capitalism, like that kind of society. Yeah. And even just growing up, I can remember hearing like negative things about money, like money doesn't grow on trees and like sayings like that. And I'm like, we need to get that verbiage out of here because money is literally everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I know we're, I can't wait to dive into the mindset stuff behind money because I only learned about that. Um, well, I guess it's been more than a few years now. It's, it's again, <laughs> time so fast, but I didn't even think about that with money with like how you talk about it how you think about it how you view it I never associated that with money before and I think it's a huge part of it that people aren't really aware of yeah 100 percent. and I think that it just goes to like mindset is everything for yeah. everything life. really in your yeah. life right and I want to just go back to something that you said in terms of like how, you know, growing up, you were hearing these things, right? So people's money stories start very young. And it's really yeah. a story that you just like any other story about your your worth, like you said, about a lot of things, you know, I've met people who um, have grown up in very kind of humble households, don't make a lot of money, but are great savers and really are in a great yeah. financial position, but they just have such a positive outlook on money. And then whereas, I mean, I've, I've 
seen dealt with people who make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year and and have no money whatsoever so where is it 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 has nothing to do with how much money you make it's it's how you view it it's how you spend it um and really um at the end of the day that all begins at a very young age and we don't even know what's happening at that point right (laughs) so there's a lot of work to unpack when you get older and you kind of start to unpack that and say okay like what am I talking, what am I telling myself about money and how it's tied to my worth? And what we see a lot of is people accumulating debt, trying to keep up with other people, oh, right? Keeping up because with the Joneses. Yeah. Keeping up. Exactly. Yeah. You know, that is just the perfect example. And, and don't get me wrong. I, I have been caught up in that in the mm-hmm. past. I completely yeah, understand. So no it's shame awesome. for anyone. No yeah. shame. Yes. Like, let me just add another disclosure. Like, there is no <laughs> shame here. Like, I, yeah. in my 10 years of banking, I have dealt with a, a huge array of different financial situations. And I don't judge anybody because the oh. reality of it is, is that some of the worst financial situations that I've seen were the result of really, really bad circumstances and situations yeah. that led people there. And yeah. a lot of that starts, you know, um, also from uh, education level, you know, so I realized that even myself in my own life, I do come from a place of privilege where I was taught these things early on and, and my parents were fairly good with money. Not everybody is that fortunate, right? That's right. Um, so I talked to a lot of people who literally don't know the first thing about money. I've, you know, 18, 19 year olds opening their first bank account for the yeah. first time and just learning how to spend money. Like it's, <laughs> you, you just have to meet people where they're at. Um, and, and that's yeah. really what I endeavor to do in general and with my work. So yeah, no shame wherever you're starting. It's okay. Uh, yeah, there have been the people journey. who have, there have been people who started right where you are, wherever that is. Right. Yeah. So, um, and it's never I, too late to turn it around and like, don't no, feel absolutely. guilt and shame. Like I'm guilty of this for like being embarrassed or something about a situation. And like Essie said, it doesn't necessarily mean you did this. Like there's things that happen. Life is life. Like yeah, we all know it. Life is life. Things happen. Yeah. And don't be ashamed to make a change in your life or embarrassed. Like that's something I can personally say I've dealt with being like embarrassed. Like, oh God, I can't believe I let this happen. But mm. if you don't do something about it, it's not going to change. So Right. No, absolutely. And I mean, at the end of the day, the reality of it is I can also relate to what I'm saying. And I've, I've been on the other side of that and felt that shame, yeah. you know, and, and, and I also know that as the other person sitting on the other side, you know, we, we as bankers, for the most part, I mean, I can't speak for anybody else but myself. We don't tend to judge people because we deal with all kinds of situations. Right. Um, but no, I've, I've definitely been there as well. And I, I understand. So, um, I think that really the biggest thing about money is that it is, it is emotional. It is, not just numbers and cents and it's not you know similarly to um you know if you were we say you know don't go on a crash diet it's not going to last exactly most of the people who take uh you know some kind of budgeting course and they make a super strict budget and then they stick mm-hmm. to it for a month and then it all falls apart right and the the basis of those things for the most part and that's going to speak to all of it because there, there are some great financial gurus out there who um i call them financial gurus i mean you could call them whatever, like that. You know, financial coaches yeah. whatever Um, that have really cool methods and ways to do things. And each person is different. So each person spends Mm. their money differently. Um, You know, some money, some people, uh, you know, will save and spend the same amount of money, no matter how much money they make. Some people will increase their spending as their money increases. That's a large, (laughs) large portion of people, right? (laughs) So, but I guess the point here is that, you know, similarly to how we say that, you know, going on a crash diet is unhealthy, going on a crazy strict budget where you're taking all the joy out of your life is, is equally as unhealthy, right? Preach. I'm so happy you just said <laughs> yeah. that. I'm sorry. I have to give you props for that because she's a financial girl and she's saying still, you have to have joy in your life. And I'm a big person that loves it. And I love joy. We're very joyous people. So well, you have so much more joy when you yeah. can, you know, we, we work so hard for our money, right? So if you're working that hard for your money and you're not enjoying it in any way, it really affects a person's mental health, you know? Oh my and, and God, yes. 
And I'm speaking to a lot of people who make good money and their expenses are very high and, and it's yep. hard. It's hard for people to be in that situation, right? So for sure. at the end of the day, there are always things that people can do, right? There's mm-hmm. always, always things. So first of all, I, I want to read a quote and I actually wrote it down because I, I think that this is like the base for what I want to talk about. Yes. Oh my God. Quote, yes. We're getting words of wisdom already. Yes. <laughs> well, this, this, So the quote is from um, a man called Ramit Sethi. Ramit is a like multi-millionaire financial uh, guru, I guess I'll yeah. call him. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that'll be our word. As, but he, but, but he's an incredible man. He's been doing this for about 20 years. He has a great, great, great book that literally changed my life. And I was yeah. already in banking at the time. Um, yeah. And basically the quote is this. So you get to spend extravagantly on the things you love and cut costs mercilessly on the things you don't. And that is the base of his approach. So his book is called, I will teach you to be rich. And don't write that down. (laughs) It's a good book. It's a good book. I love the title. (laughs) And he's, and the thing is like, I love his approach because he talks about how, you know, the people say, well, don't, you know, don't buy coffee or, you know, make your coffee at home or don't do this specific thing or don't do that specific thing and overgeneralize it to people. But basically what he says is figure out what's important to you. Figure out what makes you happy. I love that. However, you know, allocate a certain amount of money that you can spend whatever you want on that thing or those couple of things or whatever that is. But then find the other areas where you're spending money that you don't really care that much. So like I'll I'll, I'll give you a practical example of what that looks like for me. I love to eat out. I spend yes. a ridiculous oh amount of money on eating <laughs> Me too. Up. Like, it's, like, honestly, when I, when I look back on it, I, I used to get a little, like, sick looking at how much I'm money glad I you eat. said that because that's how I feel. Since moving to Vancouver and having Uber Eats and DoorDash at my disposal, I'm like, girl, you need to stop. But I love food. I'm like, yes. <laughs> is it right so I mean of course within reason like don't make yourself bankrupt buying stuff from DoorDash but like you know, th- so my like counter example of something that I don't care about that I literally hardly spend money on is is clothes I mean oh. I, <laughs> I don't I'm, not I'm like clothes. let's have a fashion <laughs> show let's go <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's okay. And you're very fashionable, obviously. You know, I'm I'm not. Um, I never was a fashionista, but that doesn't right? To like you and like I totally no, get. No, exactly. But but other things do, right? So yeah. I just you know made when I read Rumi's book, and actually I listened to his podcast. Now he has great podcasts. He talks oh, to couples sweet. about money. It, it's golden. He talks to couples, awesome. and it, it, it's absolute gold. It's wonderful. Um, and I what's his name I again? I just want to. Write everything Ramit. down here. Okay, R A M I T. Cool. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's what literally was the quote like, again? That's his, that's his Insta handles, like at oh, Ramit. <laughs> it's so perfect. Simple. And the book it's, is uh, "I Will Teach You to Be Rich." Okay, yeah. cool. And what? Yeah, Very and I'll cheesy title. one more time. So I love the title. Um, here for it. <laughs> The, the thing is, he really, like, he really goes step by step. Like, he starts yeah. with, you know, he teaches you all about how credit cards could work better for you. He even gives you scripts on how to, like, renegotiate interest rates and, oh, my God, like, how much you're paying on internet. and like I need this book. Away. I need this because I need help with that sometimes because I'm, like, scared because I'm, like, I don't know what I'm talking about. So, yay. <laughs> Exactly. So, I mean, he is in the States. So some of the things that he talks about have to be like translated to the Canadian words, but he, he's very, right. very interesting guy. And and he's very like, no bullshit. He likes to, uh, to like make fun of trolls and stuff. So he's also <laughs> very entertaining. And, I love yeah, that. Anyways, I, I really like this guy if you, if you haven't gotten that yet. Um, so the quote, again, you were asking is you get to spend extravagantly on the things you love and cut costs mercilessly on the things that you don't. Because right, that's how you drinkers, create. listen to that. that listen to that. that. Is it. <laughs> so that is how you are able to make a budget that you can actually stick to. Is when you are able to spend money on the things that bring you joy. Is that a latte? That. You know, is that a latte? Is it? Uh, is it eating out? Is it clothes? Yeah. Like, what is it actually? Oh man, I feel like is, is clothes. Right? 
I have a hard time because I'm like, I like this, I like this, I like this, I like this. I'm like, <laughs> how would I, I feel like I need like a, what's the word? It's like a rating system. Like what's the most important thing that you really want to spend on? Well, and actually that can be really helpful too. Like, you know, making a list of all the things that you actually want and then actually just giving yourself space to sit with it. So ah. not impulse buying. I'm, I'm an impulsive person. <laughs> Me too. So, you know, I'm, uh, I can be guilty of like, hey, I want this. I'm going to go and I'm going to order it. And the next, you know, I'm yeah. like, I actually do that again. You like, know I'm what you sure. were saying about like the uh, crash diet thing? It's almost like when yeah. you restrict yourself with eating so much. I know for me anyway, I'll eventually binge. That's like me. If I budget 100%. too strictly, yeah. I impulsively binge. And I'm like, let's go yeah. shopping. Like, yeah. And I don't yeah. care. And it feels good. And that's when my impulse completely takes over because I give zero fucks. I'm like, let's go. Like, I don't yeah. care. And no buyer's after, remorse. Afterwards, <laughs> you're like, oh, damn, I don't have this money that maybe I needed for something else. Right. So, yeah. I mean, you know, like I, I want to say, though, similarly also to if you need like a metabolic reset, let's say, like, let's say, you know, you're you're really like insulin resistant and you have this big issue with sugar and you decide, okay, I need to cut out sugar for 30 days so that I can actually like reset my yeah. my body and what's going on here. Right. Um, so similarly, you, you can do that with budgeting as well. Right. And just figure mm. out like, okay, I'm going to go really strict for this period of time just so you can analyze get your head where, above water a little. well exactly well in that too right so give yourself a bit of a head start like it depends where you're starting from right so if you're starting from a position where you have a lot of debt and all these things you know when you're thinking about your rich life which is what Ramit calls it you know living your rich life no matter where you're at and that could be you could do that and I love still be that. In debt as long as you are spending on the things that are most important to you while, you know, consciously working towards your other goals. So, you yeah, know, if you're not in a place where you can spend all of the money that you would like to spend on your, your things that compose your rich life, you know, then, you know, that's okay. You start with what's, what's most important, what's accessible to you. Maybe you can't take that $5,000 trip five times a year, but maybe you can get yourself a Starbucks latte because that's what you, you know, that makes you just yeah. feel really good if you do that like two or three times a week or whatever, whatever that is. Yeah, right? and, totally. and that is like more accessible, but it gives you that little bit of joy where you feel like, mm -hmm. okay, you know, I'm doing something for myself. Um, and, and that can apply to anything. So again, it's very individual. Everybody's very different. Um, but I, I love that concept. So I've done a lot I of do work too. in terms of just thinking about that. Like what makes me happy when I spend money on it? What makes me yeah. not happy when I spend money on it? So it, a great example of something that does not make me happy that I've, I've cut out is my Spotify membership. <laughs> and, there you, you know, go. And, and I love, and I love music, but actually what we ended up doing is my, my partner added me to his account. So that's a cheap, <laughs> cheap option. So I don't have to pay for it. But, but for about, you know, two or three years, I had free Spotify and people were like, well, why do you have free Spotify? Like it's, ten dollars a month like really it's not I, I can afford it but it's more just that concept that I like ingrained in my brain that was like mm -hmm. no I don't I don't actually care that much about this so I don't want to exactly. pay for it whether it's ten dollars yeah. or a hundred dollars money's money exactly yep. exactly now did that actually make a tangible difference in my finances no probably <laughs> not but I think that it's, it's kind of like a muscle right so it's like your mm -hmm. brain muscle is like figuring yeah. out what you don't care about and then being able to just get yourself to not spend money on those things right I like that yeah I like that a lot I'm like how about what, what about bills I don't like spending money on those <laughs> <laughs> right oh my god yeah who does I mean there's a few things that you can do when it comes to bills and stuff right I mean it's hard because fixed costs are on the rise and that's what we were just mm. talking about at the beginning in terms of like the cost of living is increasing and oh, yeah. you know, rents are increasing and power you know and and gas which is a huge mm. huge cost for people oh so yeah having that go up is is a big um it's a big factor right so I mean fixed costs are fixed costs I mean obviously you know you can move into a crappier apartment or whatever but is that going to bring you joy well 
Exactly. Not, you know, so at the end of the day, the place where most people have the most opportunity to make a change is on their miscellaneous spending, right? So, mm, definitely. you know, if you're, if you're, so like, let's say, you know, if you love to spend money on eating out um, and you do it three days a week now, well, maybe you cut it down to one day a week and actually stick yeah. with that for a while, you know, like. And then you it, still it, get the little joy, but you're not mm-hmm. overdoing it, which is, I think that's great because it's not like you're going to call it turkey you still can have it just limit and then you look more forward to it yeah well no exactly so I mean that's just an example right because I mean like fixed costs are fixed costs I mean food is expensive even if you go to the grocery store so yeah how much much do you save eating at home I guess that's hard to say right it depends what you're eating um but that's just one example so I mean another thing that obviously people can do is is increase their income in some way or another and yeah you know I love that Rumi talks a lot about that too. And, and he has a, a course that he does about that. I haven't taken the course oh, or anything, cool. but um, he has a lot of really good reviews on it. So I'm assuming that it's pretty good. Um, yeah. But, you know, he, he'll give people scripts on, you know, how to get raises at work and, you know, talks a lot about how this is the best time to get a different job. Like mm. if you don't like your job, there are so many employers out there who are currently hiring and when a company is interested in hiring you, that is your best opportunity to give yourself a big fat raise because yeah, you can you can leverage that right in in whatever expertise you have, um, or whatever area is of interest to you. That there, there are opportunities out there, and what I do see a lot of is is people who stay in relatively low paying jobs who are overqualified for them. Yeah, and. You, and mostly because you know you you just this is what either it's a couple of different things it's either okay this is what I chose for my college degree so I have to do this for the rest of my life because I spent money on college or it's um you know oh I started doing this job I've been here for 10 years or 15 years you know I have a pension uh you know maybe yep. the is not that great stable but you have, stable you have job pension, you're stable right yeah so you're just gonna go to work day in and day out and be completely miserable be a zombie yeah right. uh, autopilot exactly. mm-hmm. but yet that so that is being seen as the norm and I think that that's a huge problem Kaylee honestly I do, I do because being stagnant I, and like in that, even yeah. that mentally being in that headspace drains your motherfucking soul speaking mm-hmm. from experience and it makes well, it harder it to get out sometimes because you're so stuck in that loop. And it, yep. yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and, and you're stuck on that income level too, right? Because a lot of the times these people have debt that, you know, I, yep. and I have, been, I have been in that position. You have debt. You need to make a certain amount of money to pay those debts. Yes. And there's this very, very deep fear. Again, going back to emotion, money's emotional, yes. right? Yes. You oh my God. Yeah. Fear of like, oh my God, if I switch jobs, what if I don't like it? You know, I don't like it here, but if I switch it, maybe I'll like it even less. And, yeah. you know, th- there's all these different things. But the reality of it is, is that once we realize that we are holding ourselves back, um, you know, and, and kind of move past that, it, it makes it easier to kind of be open to those opportunities because the universe is ready to give you opportunities. Yes. Right. Hundred so percent. I will say that I've I've been very fortunate to have, and then you know this. I mean, I've been very fortunate to have some great opportunities in my career and and in my life, yes. and all of them came to me at a time where I opened myself up. Yes, I was, you were brave. I up. Yeah, I, I I will say that I I was brave. Um, but you, it, she uh, was, guys. It she was, was very brave. It, it was it was. A, <laughs> thing that you know you're you're so miserable at a certain point and a person has to consider their life right whether it's five yes. years from now 10 years from now 20 years from now I'm I'm very young so I mean you know according to the government of Canada I have another I don't know 40 <laughs> 40 years so I can retire maybe 39 you know like it's it, it's a very long time so my consideration um when I got to kind of the top of that ladder was like okay, do I actually want to do this for 40 years? Like, is this, and, no. and, and I, <laughs> no, exactly. But, but it was, it was basically like standing between two precipices because it was like, oh my God, like, yes. what if I do this and it completely fails and I flop or yeah. what if I, but, but what's the alternative? What if I don't? 
What if I don't take a leap? What if I don't do this? Right. And that is equally as scary because I mean, the impact of, of being miserable and being stressed out in your job, in your life long-term, it, it can take away your health. Um, yeah, your not just your mental health, but your physical health as well. Yeah, right. So many chronic oh, for conditions sure. are related to stress. and your spirit health, like your soul. Like Absolutely. it's just like it reflects in every part of your life. And like even if other parts of your life are coming into alignment or it are in alignment, that's awesome. But let's think about it. Let's just say you work a typical nine to five. That's a lot of your time. Even if you mm-hmm. don't work a nine to five, if you're working, but I'm just going to use a nine to five as an example. You spend a lot of time there, guys, like a lot of time there. And it's like if you're mostly miserable because you hate the work, it's just – and that's okay. Every job, people are like, you should be grateful you have a job. Yeah, sure. It's not that you're not grateful. But Mm -hmm. we're all different for a reason. What I like to do might not be what Effie likes to do. And that's okay. So if you're in a job that you hate – and it's just not your jam and maybe you're awesome at it, but that doesn't mean any, like it, it's okay no. to still be like good at stuff, but not enjoy it. Like even during mm-hmm. school, like I was good at all the stuff, but I didn't like it all. I was like, no, yeah. thank you. No, exactly. And I mean, I've definitely had jobs that I've done very well at and absolutely hated. So I yes. mean, yeah. how good you are at it is not a reflection of it. Right. Um, yeah. And I guess the, the biggest thing that I think has become most important to me is really that work-life balance. Um, Mm. because I think that as someone who is a bit of a workaholic naturally, uh, that (laughs) trait, that trait actually runs in my family. So I, well, cause you you started working at a very young age, right? Like Effie's like an old soul. She's like, I don't remember. Was it for you? I don't remember how old you were, but you you started working. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. 14. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 you moved into banking quite quickly. I don't remember how old you were with that either, but. I was 17 when I got into banking. Yeah. Yeah. So So she's been in the banking a long time. (laughs) But I guess I had a bit of a, I guess I should add a disclosure there is that I had a bit of an unusual opportunity in that I was homeschooled. And so I was able to move through my high school years in two years instead of four by working my ass off. Um, yep, let me as point you out do. There, there, there's a, a misconception that uh, being homeschooled is easier, but my mom's passing grade was 85, so it was not <laughs> actually easier. Um, but I, I did work really, really, really hard, uh, and yeah. all I wanted to do was get into banking. So, like that, I, I did that completely driven by the fact that I knew that the quicker I could graduate, the quicker I could get a yeah. college something to give myself credibility and the quicker I could go into banking. That's all I want to do. And that just shows how mu- long you've loved money. I think that's great. <laughs> well, I do. I, I love that. So it, it's funny you say that because I can remember when I was 14 and I got my first job and um, the online banking at the time had this like money logic app. And I can remember having my little part-time paycheck and, you know, working like <laughs> 10 hours a week or whatever I was working at the time. And I would like divide my little paycheck up into these different accounts and like oh my god I wish I had you when I was that age because I was not doing that's what I was doing I mean that's what I was doing you know in in my bed at night on my laptop you know like oh my god you know it's funny (laughs) when I was like a little kid I was really good with money I don't know why but I you know you get money in birthday cards and things like Mm -hmm. that and I always had money always and I loved it And I don't know what happened or what shifted or what changed, but then it turned into like when I was, I worked since a very young age as well. And I just would spend my money because I'd be like, that's when I discovered shopping and all that fun stuff. (laughs) Yeah. I wish I was smart like you. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And then I grew up and was like, okay, and let's add bills on there. But yeah, I wish I was. Oh, and also, I wish I knew about that stuff. Like our education system, we need a money management course because seriously. Mm, yeah, I mean, to to be fair, like, I mean, I will say it's not just because you know these things that you follow these things. I mean, there was a period in my life where I all but threw out my previous financial healthy behaviors out the window yeah. and with some really unhealthy behaviors, which was based on my environment and where I was at at the yes. time. Yes. Um, yeah. And then, of course, now that I look back, I can I can recognize that at the time you don't yeah. really realize you think, OK, well, you're listening to what people are saying. And what are people saying? People are saying, well, this is the way it is. Everybody does this. Everybody, yes. You know, and, and the that status is the quo. 
Exactly. But it, it doesn't have to be right. Exactly. Um, and, once, <laughs> and, and once I was able to pull myself out of that, and that was really hard. And there's a lot of things that, that happened that catalyzed my ability to, to crush that mindset. Um, yeah. It, it's amazing how surrounding yourself with different types of, of um positive kind of feedback loops it makes such a huge difference right you know people surrounding yourself with people who are good with their money so if you don't have any friends if you don't have any friends that are good with your money just make sure that the accounts that you follow like get some some kind of positive you know money stuff in there I get I get a lot of like um, I had suggestions for like uh, <laughs> people who are, are like heavily investing when they're young and retiring early and all these things. And I'm yeah. not by that concept. I'm not, I'm not going to say that I'm anywhere close to that, <laughs> but, but just being um, immersed in that in a sense, because I mean, we're on social media a lot. Like, I mean, I, oh, I yeah. don't look at, I don't look at my stats mostly because I'm just a little embarrassed to be honest because <laughs> I spend a lot of time on social media. But if you're going to spend all that time on social media, you know, don't just scroll through and then see, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Jones that you want to keep up with. Yes. And then that's just creating more unhealthy behavior. If mm-hmm. you can add some some positive uh, things that are helping you propel forward, I mean that's obviously yes. what you want, right? Absolutely. Um, and, and that's a really big thing um, too is is social media, and that's how a lot of us are getting that FOMO. And yeah, because um, people are sharing the highlight reel and they're sharing yeah. like these crazy. And you know what else I find wild? Sorry, squirrel braining a little, but it's still on the same topic. <laughs> Like, I'm going to say YouTubers, for instance, and I'm not saying anything wrong with it because this is on YouTube as well. But like the really, really popular one, this particular niche is like the YouTube couples niche. I'm not eh, a hit or miss for me because some of the stuff they do, I'm just like, that's not healthy. That's very toxic. But they will do some of them will do these extravagant gift reveals for birthdays, anniversaries, whatever. And it's Mm. over the top. Like, I don't even see some celebrities flashing that kind of stuff. Like it's insane. And I'm like, their audience, I'm sure has a wider range of, you know, ages of viewers. And to see that and be like, Oh, anybody can go get a Birkin bag. FYI, a Birkin bag is very, very, very expensive. (laughs) Right. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 No. And and that goes for a lot of things, right? Because yes, you're seeing that video, but where did that money actually come from, right? So if you see somebody who's driving a car that's $100,000, what you're seeing is that that person spent $100,000. Oh. If that, you don't know, that that is not equal to that person being wealthy. Wealth and material possessions are, for the most part, highly uncorrelated, to be perfectly Mm. honest. Some of the wealthiest people that I have met and seen and work with drive few-year-old regular vehicles that are yeah. paid off that they're driving into the ground they wear normal clothes you know yeah. they maybe they and most of the time these people have kind of it, maybe they're not followers of Ruby Savy, but they kind of adopt that that sense of like okay you know we spend on these things because we care about them but we don't give a shit about this other stuff so we're not going to spend money on it exactly um, but I guess the, the point of it is you know people see when when somebody's driving a really nice vehicle, like obviously, for the most part, I'm not going to say 100% of the time because, you know, people drive vehicles for different reasons. Maybe they just, you know, really love that vehicle. Maybe that's their rich life. Maybe they just really, yes. really love driving that vehicle. That's all really cool. Not a thing, Robert. Yeah. But a lot of people buy vehicles based on what they think people are going to think of them, right? Yes. Um, and the reality of it is, and this is something I learned in a book that I, I'm actually currently reading called The Psychology of Money. It's super, super good, too. Um, it's actually an easy read. It sounds really dense. Okay. It's like a small book. It's really cool. good. Cool. The um, Psychology and, of Money, guys. Yeah, yeah. The author's a guy named Morgan Housel, and he's okay, uh, been perfect. a financial writer for like ever anyways he talks about how he was a valet through college and how he observed that you know all these people would come in with their fancy cars and they like throw their keys and obviously you know everybody's gawking at the vehicle but like unbeknownst to them when people are kind of I guess admiring that nice vehicle subconsciously we're not even admiring the person we don't actually give a shit about the person we're honestly just 
subconsciously thinking, oh, wow, if I could afford that type of vehicle, if I had that vehicle, people would look at me like I'm so cool. Yeah, it's like a status, right? it's a status thing going back to like Absolutely. the work. Yeah. But so I guess recognizing that and realizing that like, oh, wow, you know, I'm looking at these things that I'm envying, but why am I envying them? Is it actually yeah. because I think that person is better than me? Or is it just because I think that people will think I'm better than them if I have that thing it's a very like kind of complex yeah. subject it's, it's fascinating it is um, it is cool it's really fascinating and I feel like like you're saying all in the same ballpark here like with social media so many people just want to show it up you know as soon as people buy stuff or whatever they're like check yeah, out yeah. my new whatever <laughs> like yeah yeah, yeah. And, and then you know people are scrolling by and being like oh well I can't afford that or whatever but yeah. again I think that the biggest point here is just that if somebody flashes something off yes they bought it but they also don't have the money that it took to buy it anymore <laughs> right so don't get me wrong there are millionaires out there billionaires who can spend whatever they want and then they still have yes. a shit ton of money and it doesn't make a difference yeah. like that's fine but what I'm speaking to is regular people like you and I who have yeah. you know X X amount of dollars that come in each month mm -hmm. and you spend those however you wish but you know if you go out and spend five thousand dollars on something well you clearly don't have that five thousand dollars anymore right but people exactly. who are looking at whatever you bought might somewhat equate that with wealth so yeah recognizing that is, is and catching yourself is is important so it, it is yeah. hard though it's hard social media is difficult in a lot of ways not just with yeah. body image and all these things yeah. but um certainly you know from that financial perspective or whatever so um you know I think that knowing that is valuable because it's just like when you're thinking any negative thoughts or whatever being able to kind of catch yourself is is step that number first one. step Ste oh That's my step god one. girl words right out of my brain 100 <laughs> percent. yeah it's like every like we've spoken on before like any I'm going to say bad habit in air quotes. I don't want to say that in particular, but anything, any negative thought, any thought process you're looking to rewire, stopping the thought is always step number one. Like I'll obsess. Yeah. If I go down a rabbit hole, you're going to have a good luck getting me out if I let myself go yeah. too far. And if I don't yeah. stop it immediately and rewire into something positive or something constructive or whatever, it's just continuously making that neurological pathway that you don't want deeper. No, yeah. screw that. And it's Absolutely. hard work. It's not saying it's going to come easy. I think it depends how deep the wound is for you always. Some people might mm -hmm. pick up rewiring their money brain quicker than others, depending on your past, your trauma, yeah. your experience, your money, your, your emotions, everything. But it's not impossible. Like I've healed from certain things that I was like I don't know if I'm ever going to get past this and then you do mm, yeah. yeah as we know yeah healing's not linear so I'm never saying like it's a one-stop shop and you're done but rewiring is possible well and I think that also being conscious of the environment that you're in right so when I was speaking yeah. to some of the the financial habits that I adopted due to my environment I mean, the, the key for me was to get out of that environment in my case. Yes. Um, and that was a huge, um, a huge thing. And it took a long time to unravel from that. For but sure. At the end of the day, you know, I think that also being conscious of, of who's around you, who, you know, yeah. how are your friends talking about money? How are, how are you and your partner talking about money? Right. So mm -hmm. I guess actually, as I, as I say that, I want to pause there for a sec and like, it's important to talk to your partner about money. Um, I agree. And, My partner and I, we talk about it and he's actually yeah, helped me so, so much with learning that's about amazing. like crypto and stuff, which we can talk about as well. Cause I know you have your little shake pay and stuff like me. I'm like, I, I can shake an pay. app and make money. Yeah, guys, if you don't know shake pay, <laughs> You can shake yeah. your phone and you literally make money. I thought he was joking when he said that to me the first time. I was like, no. I was like, why are you doing this to me? Don't tease me. Like, he's like, no, I'm not joking. I was like, what? So I agree with that 100%. Like, it's like anything in your life. Like, who you surround yourself with, like it or not, it will have an effect on you in your life. Mm-hmm. And I want to put a pin in crypto. We'll we'll come back to that in a second. But yes, we won't squirrel is, too far from it. <laughs> no, but that, that's okay because that's a good squirrel. We'll we'll go there um, <laughs> because that that is a good topic. Now, what I want to say though is a lot of people um, 
don't actually have the important financial conversations with their partners when it yeah. becomes important. So obviously you're just dating somebody. You don't need to you know, tell them your whole life story or anything. Yeah, but, but if it's a if, partnership if, and you're if serious. It's a partnership, if, if you're going to either, you know, move in together or you're getting serious or whatever, some of the things that are important to know is how does your partner think about money? How do they think about spending money? What does their rich life look like? Yeah, because a big thing is that, you know, if your vision of a rich life looks like X and you want to spend a bunch of money on this stuff and their rich life looks completely different and they want to spend a shit ton of money on other stuff, mm-hmm. you are eventually going to have problems in that relationship because either one of those people is going to give up what they want temporarily for the benefit yep. of the other that never goes well in the end. Um, <laughs> or, you know, they're both going to try and spend money on what they care about. And that's not going to end well either. So mm-hmm. one of the biggest reasons that people split up is finances. Ah. Um, obviously, there's a lot of underlying reasons there. But my whole point of saying this is just, you know, it's uncomfortable to have money conversations with your partner for the first time. But it is very, very, very important. Um, just yes. like you should have conversations, you know, but what you care about in life and all these things. Yeah, finances, totally. Like 100%. You have to I be love that to you that. said that. <laughs> yeah, because like, and if you, like we say, that if you're, if you're going to build a life with someone, you kind of need to know where do you stand and like, you yeah. know, because if you're building something together and everybody's different, however you choose to navigate that with your partner. Mm-hmm. But like, I think there's so much value in what you're saying there, Essie, because being uncomfortable, yeah, it's uncomfortable, but it's not a bad thing. No, <laughs> well, grow. Exactly. We, we, we grow through that. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so that's all I want to say about that. So going back to crypto, yes, sh- shaking your phone <laughs> is fun. Now, mind you, the, the amount of money that you make doing that is very, very small. I know. It is. Yeah, yeah everyone's going to be like, Kaylee said, if I shook my <laughs> phone, I'd make this money. <laughs> Again, going back to the disclosures at the beginning. Okay, guys. Yeah. Not- like, <laughs> <laughs> I get excited <laughs> over any kind of money. And this is another key thing with your brain. Get excited about when you find, I know we don't use pennies anymore, but when, if you find a coin, get excited, it shows you money's literally everywhere. And that's a key thing in your brain. You have to be thinking of it in an abundant way and like continuously manifesting that into your life and like use phrases like I am a money magnet. Wealth flows to me with ease. Like I know that might sound silly to some, but it works and it's true. It doesn't mean you're going to win a million dollars, but you know, you might find five bucks in your pocket. Jackpot. Like, <laughs> absolutely. No, exactly. And and you're completely right. I mean, it's all, it's building that mindset, right? So just yeah. like if somebody's struggling with body image, mantras can be very, very oh, helpful. Yeah. So, I mean, absolutely. So when it, when it comes to crypto, the only thing that I will say, I'm, first of all, I am not an expert. I hold um, a modest amount of crypto um, that <laughs> represents a relatively small portion of my investments because the reality of it is, is that you really shouldn't be investing all your money into something that's so volatile. Um, and yeah. by volatile, I mean that, you know, the value changes from day to day dramatically. Now, yeah. <laughs> lately it's been quite a bit down, but there's been other times where it's been crazy, like crazy, crazy um, uh, up, you know, so yeah. it, it, it varies. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with investing in these things. I think that the crypto uh, world is something that's really interesting that, will definitely have a huge impact on the future. But I I guess the reality of it is, is do we know if Bitcoin is going to be the currency? Do we know if something else is going to be the currency? Do we know, like nobody has a crystal ball and you don't know what's going to happen. So Mm -hmm. I have friends who hold a like gigantic, disgusting amount of Bitcoin. And they are fully convinced that it is going to like skyrocket and go crazy and and they could be right like don't get me wrong they could be completely right I don't Mm -hmm. actually know um but at the end of the day their risk tolerance is higher than mine in that aspect I love that you said that risk tolerance (laughs) I like that that is that is the biggest thing and that comes down to who you are but it also comes down to how much money you have you know if, if you're so if you're I'll give you an example so you can have like two people. You can have, they both have, let's say it's, you know, $10,000. Yeah. 
but person a invested all in crypto and they you know they, they see it go up and down and they just you know get really excited when it goes up get really stressed out when it goes down and they just live their life on this roller coaster <laughs> and you know whatever I mean, I don't want to live my life that way. I, no. you know, I've seen, <laughs> but, you know, but somebody else could, you know, let's say have the same $10,000 and maybe, you know, have a little emergency fund in, in cash or in a lower risk investment so that if there's an emergency, they don't have to cash out their crypto if it's down, right. like, you know, and they might have, you know, I don't know, $7,000 in crypto and crypto goes down and it bothers them less because at least they know that their basic needs are met. Right. So. Right. I think that's what it comes down to is, is I think that in order to um, invest money in crypto, you just want to make sure that your basic needs are met first, right? Mm, definitely. Um, you, you, just, you just don't want to put the money that you are depending on short term in those types of investments. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think that they have huge long term potential, but short term. Mm-hmm. That's how I, I look mean, at I, it is long term. Yeah. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. And I mean, like, don't get me wrong. I mean, I have it. Obviously, I think it's cool yeah. and it's fun, and you know, all the things. And I continue to invest in it. Um, but I also like, if I have an emergency in my life, that's not where I'm going for money, right? So exactly, um, that, that's exactly. basically all I tell people. And and the other thing that I'll add to that, because people don't know this, um, currently at the present time, if you're applying for a mortgage or anything like that, banks don't even consider crypto money right now. Um, well, so exactly, I, yeah. Uh, they're not there you, yet. <laughs> no, unless you cash it out and put it in a bank account, it's it's not money, they which don't is actually care, quite yeah. unfortunate because I talk to people who like have a lot of money in crypto and I'm like, yeah, well, unfortunately that doesn't exist because it's in a crypto account. Yeah. Um, but uh, and hopefully that'll eventually evolve. But that's just kind of the status quo as of today anyways. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, no, crypto is cool. Just be mindful of how much money you're spending in there in relation to how much money you have in total and where you need that. to see money to come from. That's really good advice. I like that a lot. And my partner too, he described it to me as like a long-term thing. So that's the same as you. Mm. I look at it in that way. I'm like, sure, it goes up and down all the time. And I'm just like, it's long-term. It's fine. I'm not going to worry about that. And I don't have an astronomical amount. Yeah, I'll still shake, earn my like, what is it like? 10 cents, 20 cents, like it's not a lot guys, but it's exciting. I got it up to like 30 bucks over not a long time. And I was like, that's just $30 that I didn't have just from shaking my phone. (laughs) Like, Exactly. Exactly. And so, and and that's the thing. And you're getting excited about that. Right. Which is really like, yeah, which is the key (laughs) piece, right. Is that you're just getting pumped about it. Um, I'm the person, if you make it fun for me, if you make it simple, not overwhelming and put something fun in there, I'm okay. I'm here. Then you're like all over it. Yeah. Um, but I mean, whether it's crypto or any other type of investment, I guess the same disclosure applies is, you know, you, you, there are other investments other than crypto that are also yes. very, you know, up and down. High risk, so, right? Yeah, definitely. And I mean, don't get me wrong. If you're it's investing for 30 years, that's actually for the most part, your best way to go because over time you're going to get the greatest returns. But, um, you know, it, it really is a highly, highly individual thing. And, you know, anybody who's listening to this who is like, oh, geez, well, where where do I start? I don't know how to invest. I don't know what stocks to buy, whatever. Don't don't be at that. Don't be buying stocks. Like, go talk <laughs> to a financial advisor at whatever bank you bank at um, and, you know, sit down with them and talk about your specific situation and they'll help you figure out what makes sense for you. Nice. Um, because, you know, what works for one person does not work for somebody else. So um, doing that is definitely step number one and, and automating it, automating, automating, automating. <laughs> so, so I am a huge fan of having multiple accounts um, since I was yes. 14. As I mentioned. Yes. <laughs> um, but I, I've always loved that approach because I like to be able to nickname them and be able to see like, okay, this is money for this. This is money for that. Yeah. And it's organized, right? Exactly. Yeah. And a lot of banks will, um, I mean, certainly you know my bank but there's also other banks that I know um, will let you have more than one account linked to the same fees you're not actually paying more money you could just have more accounts linked to the same fee Um, and then you can like I mentioned nickname them and do all that but the big point is that 
if you, so for example, if you get your paycheck and you have to sit there with your paycheck and think about moving $25 to this account and $25 to this account, you are consciously like moving it. You have to be in charge of actually doing yes. that. The most successful way to do that is to automate it. So your paycheck Preach. comes in <laughs> and your money goes where it needs to go. So like, I'm a big fan without of you having... doing anything. <laughs> exactly. So you don't even, I like don't that. Even see it. it just, it does itself. And that does a couple of, of things. It also, I mean, it prevents decision fatigue. So, you know, if you're in a week where you're kind of tight and you're like, Oh geez, you know, I want to buy this thing that I maybe don't really need, but I want, but Oh, that money's supposed to go in this account for yes. saving for a trip, let's say, or whatever. But Oh, maybe, you know, if you're moving it yourself you might sit there and think well maybe I can just take it out and not put it in this time and then I'll start yep. again next week or whatever whatever that pay period is um but being having it be automatic kind of prevents you from doing those types of things and also um it, it helps you stay organized it saves you time yes. it saves you brain space it does a lot of things yeah so if you really, I get overwhelmed easily so that yes. is been a godsend for me because it's just one less thing I have to think about so if you're yeah. overwhelmed and you have too much in your brain automate your shit <laughs> yeah no absolutely um, and, and that's the thing. So you can automate anything. I mean, you can, it, yeah. even if you, um, you know, if you pay your, your phone bill or whatever, you go online and you pay it yourself each month. Like there's like five ways that you can automate that. So that you yeah. actually don't have to do it. Whether you want to pay from your bank account, you want to pay from your credit card, whatever the case may be. Like there, there's so many things that a person can do. You don't have to be sitting in your bank account, making those decisions every month or every no. two weeks or whatever that pay period is. Um, and the other thing that that does, especially when it comes to like investments, is that because investments go up and down, if you're investing regularly, you end up um, paying a, la a lower um, average cost for the oh. funds and things that you're buying because you're gonna in you're gonna end up buying some when it's a little bit lower, and then you might oh. buy some when it's a little bit higher, and then it, that it, makes it's sense. automatically being done, so you don't actually have to think about it. You don't have yeah. to you know, sit there and figure out, well, is this a good price to buy it at? You know, yeah. is it like, I mean, I know people who are very good at stock trading and, um, and I actually, I tried myself. I thought, okay, I'm going to transfer some money into the stock trading platform and I'm going to play around with it. And I love playing with money. So like, this <laughs> yeah. tells you how. and I got so overwhelmed so quickly. Like I immediately just went back into mutual funds because I was like, <laughs> see ya. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, this is not what I want to be doing with my time. I mean, I, I love <laughs> playing with money, but this is not interesting to me. Now, on the other hand, I mean, there's some people who love it, right? Some people love doing that yeah. research and they love to trade stocks and, and make a lot of money at it. That's really cool. If you're that person, I, I admire you. I bow down to you. I am yes. not that person. <laughs> so, you know, mutual funds, way to go. Um, actually, I'm, I'm not even technically allowed to say that word. So people pretend I didn't say that word. I uh, <laughs> gave up my license when I started doing mortgages. <laughs> so I don't sell investments anymore. Because, um, yeah, you actually have to be licensed to talk about mutual funds. So I did have right. that in the past, um, but now have given that up. So, yeah, yeah. not financial advice people no no financial advice here just stories of our life <laughs> yeah exactly exactly <laughs> so no I mean I think that at the end of the day it's it's just about finding a way to be happy and that starts with who you surround yourself with who you're around at work all these things and I mean what I would say to people is don't don't limit yourself. Don't sell yourself short. You know, you're yeah. worth more than you think you are. You know, if, yes. if you're stuck in a if you're stuck in a job where you're miserable and you think there's nothing else that's out there for you, try to open yourself up. Because yeah. until you do, the world is closed. There's nothing yeah. out there for you if you're not open to it. Right. That's right. So I mean when I was just a kid and, you know, working my, my little subway job and <laughs> wanted to be a banker, I mean, I was applying for bank jobs at like 15, 16 years old because I, w I was prospected that young to apply and uh, they couldn't hire me legally because I was too young. And I remember, you know, people around me were 
things like, yo, you're not going to get a job. You're too young. You're not smart enough. You're not th-. like all these, all these negative things. And I can remember just laying in my bed at night and literally just like, now that I look back, I think it was manifestation, honestly. Yes. At that time, I, di- I didn't know what manifestation was at the time, but I would, I would just almost obsess over it. I would just be thinking oh. like, well, why, why not me? Why can't I deserve more? Why is, why is being young an obstacle? Like, why can't I mm. do this? Why are all, you know, and, and really kind of hyping myself up. Like, no, yeah. I would be awesome at this, right? <laughs> and and I and I look back and I remember doing that and it and it almost felt silly at the time. But you know, I honestly think that looking back, like that's what got me to where I am today. Yeah. Was and even applying really... at that young of an age, just going for it. You were like, I'm just gonna go for it. Like that's amazing. <laughs> there was a lot of rejection there because yeah. they couldn't they couldn't even hire me, even if they wanted to, right? Um, but it was great experience. Like all of those Mm -hmm. interviews, all of those things that I did, all of those things that I learned to prepare for them, like all of it was really kind of setting me on a journey. And, and, and really some of the opportunities that have come my way, I'm sure are just manifested from the, that work that I did back then and and that I continued to do throughout the years. So now now, I mean, I'm trying to continue implementing that. I mean, I'm, I'm doing a job that I love and I enjoy. Yeah. And um, it was such you know, a big I'm, jump for you, the job you're in now. Oh, it was so, huge. it was a big change just in so many ways. And I was like, I was like, Essie, I can remember when you were like telling me about <laughs> it. I was like, if anyone's going to rock this job, it's going to be you because you don't just sit around, you go get it. She is a badass bitch. Like she gets it done. <laughs> like, <laughs> And it's well, true, you're and, killing it. And, well, and and thank you, thank you. I I think that I'm doing reasonably well for what I'm doing. Yeah. For sure. Um, and I think that part of it for me, because honestly, when I first started this job, you know, being in a commissioned environment and these things, I really thought that doing more was what I needed to do, and right. I pretty much burnt burnt myself out, like yes. trying to just work seven Guilty days a week, as well. hours a day, like yeah. crazy, crazy. And yes, I made a lot of money, but I was tired and I was exhausted yeah. and I, and I would, you know, just not have space for anything else. Yeah. So the joy wasn't now, there. Right. But now I'm reprioritizing the value in my work, not just by the amount of money I make, but the amount of flexibility that I'm able to have. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I work evenings and weekends and all kinds of times but I'm really trying to be conscious about taking the time for myself because if I don't take care of myself I can't take care of other people and taking care of other people is what I want to do right exactly and a a great example of that was just a few weeks ago where I was having an insane day just so much stuff at work was was just not going right and it was so frustrating I was so overwhelmed I was so stressed and I literally just picked up, I forget which one it was, a little like three minute meditation that you have. Oh, yes. And I like, and I like laid down on the couch for three minutes with my <gasps> earphones in. And I just like took some deep breaths. I had my essential oils because you know, I'm all about the oils. Yes, love and the oils. I, and honestly, then I, I got up from that and I made myself a cup of tea and I sat back down and it's actually incredible how much that five minute break actually mm-hmm. changed that day so dramatically and yeah. um and it, it it really kind of drove home that whole like okay you know balance isn't just about oh taking a, a hot epsom salt bath or you know this big extravagant like spa day it's not yeah. even about that it's about it's about taking five minutes to stop that negative feedback loop yes. it's to and be intentional with it space. like like yes. let yourself have like you knew you were like I'm gonna screw this like we're we're stopping the, it's like you were you're doing your little uh stopping that train of thought exactly. or that yeah exactly and th- and that's exactly what I was doing but I mean me two years ago wouldn't have done that me two years exactly. ago would have kept going and worked my 16 hour day or whatever and then just like start frustrated again the next day but it, in this yeah. sense just that that speaks to growth but it also just speaks to 
that that mindset shift right and that just applies in so many different areas of life so I right guess that's what, what I love about it is, is it applies in so many places it's so good right yeah and I mean at the end of the day I guess what I'm trying to say is for people like Yes, I mean, we're talking about money and money is important and making more money will help you be happier to an extent, okay? There's a certain point at which making more money won't actually equal to happiness. If you're making crazy money, but you're working 80 hours a week and you have no time for family or friends, um, you know, you you might not be super happy. I mean, if you are, that's great. I commend you, but I've discovered that I I wasn't that person. Like I, I need to have time for the relationships in my life spark joy Um, to do what brings you joy yeah well exactly and I think that as I look at jobs in general I mean not that I'm job hunting because I'm not but I'm always um I'm always in an open mindset right so um sometimes you know opportunities will come my way or I'll see things and I'll kind of think about it now when I consider a job it's not even how much money it is it's how much flexibility would I have who would I be working with where would I be working like what kind (laughs) of condition you know like all of these different factors and so what I would say to anybody who's kind of looking to get a different job or or try and get back into that space is definitely consider the money for sure I mean it's important we just spent make sure you can cover your cost yeah yeah make sure you can cover your cost and and be happy with your income but at the same time, you know, if you can get a job that pays you a little bit lower than another job, but that gives you much more flexibility, work-life balance options, you're working mm. in a positive environment, like that is worth its weight in gold, right? Especially 100%. from a long-term perspective. Yeah. Um, so I guess I would just encourage anybody that's out there that's kind of stuck in that loop to just, just give yourself some credit for all the things that you know that you can do and realize that there are people out there who will pay for your exact skill set. Yes. Oh my yeah. God. You're going to make me emotional. I was like speaking <laughs> to my soul. That's amazing. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> There's your pep talk, everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was the pep talk. That's all I got. <laughs> oh my God. That was amazing. <laughs> I'm like, all right, let's do this everyone <laughs> yeah, going on LinkedIn BRB <laughs> yeah seriously and it's so true like being open to opportunities and like I love that you said that Essie about like be your own hype queen and be your own cheerleader because like you are amazing and I I can say for myself guilty of not seeing what I have and not knowing my worth but like believe it you're worth it And that's going to further manifest and attract that to you on because and plus it'll give you that boost to put yourself out there. It's like um, the chain of events, right? Like it's one thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that that's how the law of attraction works, right? So, yeah. So I hope that everybody that is listening to this is got one tiny timbit, if anything, that just helps you propel your finances forward whether that's paying off debt or getting a different job or just thinking about money differently um, or taking steps to have conversations that you need to have with people about money whatever that is wherever you know you're at um, you know I wish you grace and and love in that field because it is it is a it's something that can be very stressful so it's uh yeah, hopefully I was able to add a little bit of value for people. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. I was going to say, do you have final words of wisdom? But you just, you gave it to us. I didn't even have to ask. (laughs) You let us have it, honey. (laughs) Yeah. And I was like, there it is right there. (laughs) You knew you did. Well, she's uh, one of my number one fans. So you listen all the time, you know, you knew it was coming. I I knew it was coming. So I was just prepared here. Yeah. (laughs) It flows so naturally. That was perfect. (laughs) it is super fun to be able to talk about these things. And obviously it's a topic that I enjoy. So I'm sure that when I come visit you, we'll be talking some more about this off air. Um, Oh yeah. But but no, I mean, I, I would just say like, you know, if, if um, anybody wants to dive deeper into these subjects, like I said, Ramit Sethi, great resource. 
um that book that I'm reading money psychology I'm like three quarters of the way through it it's fantastic Yay. by Morgan Housel um and though have you read kind of there's a couple I was going to ask you about have you read the you are a badass at making money I I have not but I've heard of it I've heard it's of it awesome so this I think you'd love if anyone's curious this is really good for like your brain, like your mindset, how you talk about money, how you view money. Like when I was saying I'm a money magnet, that's where I got it was this book. Um, and is it Jen? I don't know if I'm saying her last name correctly. Sin- is it Sincero? It's S-I-N-C-E-R-O. Um, I would say that sounds right. Sincero, but, Sincero. I mean, Correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but you'll be able to find it. And I haven't actually got to read this one yet, but someone gave it to me and I'm curious about it. It's called The Rules of Wealth by Richard Templar. I have not yet read it, but. I haven't heard of it or him, but. Ah, possible like goodie. Good. <laughs> yeah. It's one of those, well, I have to get Audible. I Well, yeah, you need to get Audible. I mean, Audible. So is I can listen. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that that's what I do. I mean, that's why I don't have any books to show you is because I just <laughs> listen to them while I'm driving in that um, and multitasking. So, I mean, that's a really yeah. great way to get it in. So pe- people that say they don't have time to read, um, you know, you're not Audible. optimizing your time, right? You can, you can yeah. listen and do other things at the same time. Exactly. So. Exactly. Yeah. That's perfect. Well, I love that. And if anyone wants to connect with you, if you, if they've resonated with you, is there any socials you can plug in for them? Yeah, I mean, you can find me on Instagram. I'm not okay. super, uh, I'm not posting <laughs> stuff about money or anything. I don't post too much about my work um, for, you know, legal bank reasons. But yeah, um, if you want to follow me personally and what I'm up to, I'm at se.marie. Um, and, uh, and that's my Instagram and that's kind of where I think I'm most active. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. I really appreciate you having me on. It was so good to see you and I can't wait to uh, give you big hugs in person soon. Yes. Oh my God. No, I want to thank you so, so much for joining us. I know you're super busy, so I'm happy we could make this work before you get here in person. Mm. I'm so excited. I won't go on about that because like, I'm very excited and it will be amazing, (laughs) but Thank you so much for sharing like all your knowledge with money and mindset and how much it's linked with emotion. I just think this is great. I feel like this could be like a few, we could have a few parts to this conversation. So, <laughs> you know, if everyone, if you liked this, give us a rating. If you're on YouTube, you know, like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. That'll help the channel grow. And if you want to see more from Essie and you want more, you know, tips in this way, let us know and then we'll, we'll have her back and it'll be great. So yay. Absolutely. Yay. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you soon, my love. Yes, thank you. So that's tea time, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.